Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what in the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers reasonable suspicion, handcuffing, and 911 calls, and is brought to us by 11 Alive's channel and TMZ. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On January 7th, 2022, Black Panther director Ryan Coogler stopped at a Bank of America branch located in Atlanta, Georgia, to withdraw $12,000 in cash. In an attempt to be discreet, Mr. Coogler passed a note to the teller that read, I would like to withdraw $12,000 thousand dollars cash from my checking account. Please do the money count somewhere else. I'd like to be discreet. Mr. Coogler also provided his ID and ATM card, and correctly entered the PIN for his account. Despite this, the teller was worried by the interaction, and after discussing the situation with her manager, called 911. My pass and note, and so I just told my manager I didn't feel comfortable, so he told me to call police while he, I guess, stalled for What is the, what's on the note, ma'am? Um, it just says I want to withdraw twelve thousand dollars. Um, just be discreet. Is this an actual customer, or are they trying to rob the bank? They had a debit card, and he inserted it. He gave me a California ID, but I was like, "How do you want the cash back?" And he's like, "Just look at the note." And he had no weapons, correct? Not that I know of. He just has on black sunshades, a black hat. Is he a black male, white male? He's a black male, and every time I ask him, like, a question, he's like, look at the note. But he inserted his debit card, and then I asked for his ID. He handed me his ID as a California ID, but I didn't look at his name because I'm just, like, so shook up. Like, I don't know what he's trying to do. So I just told him, give me one moment. You know, I have to get my manager. Okay, so none of his interface information was even verified. Okay. He might just want to be discreet, but I have police in route. Sergeant Fernandez and several other officers from the Atlanta Police Department responded to the call. While Mr. Kugler was waiting in the bank lobby, an officer approached him, placed him in handcuffs, and led him to the back of a police cruiser. Hey, dude, sorry, just, just hang tight right there. I'm going to talk to you for a minute. One sec, bro. To what? Just one sec. Can somebody take my glasses off my face? Take the glasses off. Panic attack, bro. I got you. You need some air? I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, man. I just, I just can't believe this, man. Is that, is that my, is that my, my family's baby nurse? Did y'all, y'all have her detained right now? Who? The baby nurse, the, the Filipino woman that was in the back seat. Did y'all have her detained right now? Yes, she's being detained. All right. Uh, can you, uh, did the officers explain what's going on while we're out here? Not really, man. All right, so we got yeah, a call, basically. I heard, I heard, I heard somebody ask me if I passed a note. So yeah. So, goes, so ba basically, we got a call, and uh, from what we got the call, it seems like someone was trying to rob the bank. Uh, something about you passing a note to the teller, something to that effect. Uh, can you just tell me what's going on? Or Sergeant Fernandez explains that Mr. Kugler was detained based solely on the 911 call, which he claimed made it seem like he was trying to rob the bank because he passed a note to the teller. However, in her 911 call, the teller also explained that the note requested to discreetly withdraw $12,000, and that, although Mr. Kugler had provided his debit card and ID, the teller did not even check to see if the name on the ID matched the name on the account. While the teller's allegations in full likely would not have given rise to the level of reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Mr. Kugler, a court would only consider the information known to the officers when determining whether officers had reasonable suspicion. In the infamous 1968 case of Terry v. Ohio, the Supreme Court held that when a court assesses whether reasonable suspicion exists, quote, it is imperative that the facts be judged against an objective standard. Would the facts available to the officer at the moment of the seizure or the search warrant a man of reasonable caution in the belief that the action taken was appropriate? Similarly, in the 19 1996 case of United States versus Michael, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Georgia, explained that, quote, reasonable suspicion is determined from the totality of the circumstances and from the collective knowledge of the officers involved in the stop. This means that, as the Supreme Court stated in the 2014 case of Hine versus North Carolina, quote, a search or seizure may be permissible even though the justification for the action includes a reasonable factual mistake. 
an officer might, for example, stop a motorist for traveling alone in a high-occupancy vehicle lane only to discover upon approaching the car that two children are slumped over asleep in the back seat. The driver has not violated the law, but neither has the officer violated the Fourth Amendment. In Mr. Kugler's case, when evaluating if the reasonable suspicion standard was met, a court could only take into account the information that dispatch provided to the officers, and not the totality of the information provided in the 911 call. Although it is unclear what the officers were told, it seems from Sergeant Fernandez's summary that the officers were unaware of the contents of Mr. Kugler's note or the fact that he had provided ID and his ATM card. Therefore, it is possible that a court could conclude the officers had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Kugler on suspicion of bank robbery, depending on the details they'd received from dispatch. It's a, it's a, it's a medical assistant that works in my house that prefers me paying in cash. Every time I make a withdrawal to pay her, you know, because it's a, a large amount, she works a lot. Yeah. If I don't write down on a note how much I went out, and then I don't want it ran through the money counter right there at the desk, the whole bank ends up looking at me because they just hearing money going through the money through the account, and I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe getting money out like that. So every time I go to withdraw it, you know, I, I put that, I put the amount, the account I want to take and all that, gotcha. and I put my own card in. And then they and then they usually take. I mean, I, I always just just get the get the money from them. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Uh, I, I I don't understand. So what's, you you what's make going on. you make well. That's like I said. That's the reason why we're out here, and that's the reason why we detained everybody because we didn't know exactly what was going on. So you make but I was these. Trying, but I, but I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you. Man. Y'all, y'all never like y'all never asked me what was going on. So yeah. Well, that. unfortunately, we in in those situations in a situation. Where's the ID? In this pocket. In this. Is the ID in this pocket? Just hang tight. Oh. Just Sir. So the reason that we oh, don't. Oh, 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 uh, officer, officer, officer. Just give me a sec, man. I got you. Go hey, ahead. Do you need to get some first aid and then take the mask off for a second to get some first no, aid? I, I, okay. I got a five month old baby at home, bro. I don't want to have to take my mask off. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. So I'm just trying to manage my emotions right now. Bro. I understand. You know I understand. So, um, like I was, uh, I was about to tell you, um, the seriousness of the call doesn't allow us to. Officer, let me ask you a question, sir. Yes, sir. You're talking to me right now, and I'm cuffed in the back of the car. Yeah. My team's and driver's cuffed. Yeah. I imagine in the back of the car. Yeah. And and, and, the, and my baby nurse that takes care of my baby is cuffed in the back of the car. Yeah. Is there any reason we can't have this conversation once you get these cuffs off everybody and we? Yeah. And we, and we back to being chill, like yeah, yeah. standing there society. Yeah. Is that's fine. For that, bro? Yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, get you out of the handcuffs. I'd mean, love to have this conversation with you, man. But I got this, you. This is, this is, uh, I understand. We, don't. we we just, uh, I, while they're getting you guys out of handcuffs. I stated to, to the officers that arrested me that had, that had their Glocks out. Yeah. That I was pulling money on my own account. I understand. I, I, put the, I put my own bank card in there before the lady went in the back. You know what I'm saying? So, so and, and we, we have to confirm that. You got to understand, we can't, we don't come out, because of the seriousness of the call, we don't just come out, and unfortunately, in a situation like that, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. We detain, and then we ask questions later. Um, that's what exactly what I went inside for. Hey, you can you can take them out, the other people that are handcuffed. Um, so that's why we come out with weapons, that's why you're detained, and then we ask questions later, because of the nature of the call. The officer explains that they immediately detained and handcuffed Mr. Kugler because of the serious nature of the call. Although the officers clearly did not have probable cause to make an arrest, in some situations, courts have found the use of handcuffs during a Terry stop to be reasonable. For instance, in the 1989 case of U.S. versus Hasta Morir, the 11th Circuit held that because, quote, police may take reasonable action based upon the circumstances to protect themselves during investigative detentions, the handcuffing in question, quote, constituted a Terry stop stop, and was a reasonable action designed to provide for the safety of the agents. However, courts have long recognized that a Terry stop can ripen into a de facto arrest that must be supported by probable cause, with the use of handcuffs or other restraints on an individual's freedom of movement being a factor to be considered when deciding whether a detention constituted an arrest. In the 2007 case of U.S. v. Williams, the 11th Circuit noted that, quote, to determine whether a stop became an arrest, we apply four non 
non-exclusive factors. The law enforcement purposes served by the detention, the diligence with which the police pursued the investigation, the scope and intrusiveness of the detention, and the duration of the detention. The court explored the third factor of the test in more detail in the 2004 case of U.S. v. Acosta, stating that, quote, Under the third factor, we ask whether the scope and intrusiveness of the detention exceeded the amount reasonably needed by police to ensure their personal safety. The Supreme Court has stated that officers may take reasonable steps to ensure their safety so long as they possess an articulable and objectively reasonable belief that the suspect is potentially dangerous. Based on this, the court concluded that, quote, an investigatory stop does not necessarily ripen into an arrest because an officer draws his weapon, handcuffs a suspect, orders a suspect to lie face down on the ground, or secures a suspect in the back of a patrol car. While restriction on freedom of movement is a factor to be taken into account in determining whether a person is under arrest, it alone is not sufficient to transform a Terry stop into a de facto arrest. As with the issue of reasonable suspicion, whether immediately detaining Mr. Kugler in handcuffs and placing him in the cruiser was reasonable depends on the information known to the officers at the time. If the officers were aware of all the facts the teller communicated in the 911 call, Mr. Kugler would have a strong argument that the immediate use of handcuffs before attempting to investigate the situation was unnecessary and unreasonable. Do you have anything? I, I, I'm not reaching in the neck and grabbing nothing, y'all. No, so y'all can give me something okay. to write down on it. Y'all can put it down. All right. Brian had guns drawn on me in the wall, bro. You understand know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my own money out of my own account. It's a major problem, man. And the, and the officers that were arresting me, I was trying to communicate that with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got, I got, y'all reaching for my badge. I got my ID hanging on my hip. I got you. I got it in my bank card. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I. I I, do, 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 you, do you understand where we're coming from? Do you understand yeah. that we're not, we didn't just show up here and put draw guns on you? We showed up because the call was, uh, came in. I, 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 I understand. Yeah. That's somebody up. Yeah. That's all I know. Right now, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, on, I'm on here trying to make a movie. You know what I'm saying? In, 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 in Atlanta. My, my work is employing a thousand people here. You feel me? I'm trying to take care of some personal business. And I get two hammers from Hey, uh, y'all do me a favor and give it, uh, write down all our names so, so and put I, it on a paper form. Y'all do me a favor and just step off. Yeah. Yeah. It's a problem. I need, I need everybody. He's, they're writing all, your, yeah, all our names down. You know what I'm saying? And I need to find out who made that call in there. Yeah. Yeah, you have all right to do so. Yeah, I got, I got. But I just want you to understand what what what, what my sergeant advised you have, on the nature of the call. That's, that's you, all I need you to understand. Have you ever okay. considered speaking to them before you make a transaction like that? Have you ever had something like this happen? Have I ever been arrested? No. no, 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 no. Have you ever considered speaking to them about what it is you're trying to do prior to doing? I, I, with... so, so can I explain something to you, bro? Yeah. I'm not trying to out here, bro. Like, I'm not saying out loud how much money I'm taking. Though. That's, That's what, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm not no, talking no, about no. speaking to somebody like that. I'm saying, no, no, hey, can I speak just, to just, a manager in an office somewhere? Have you ever considered I, I, doing I'm something a, like I'm that? I'm considering now that y'all so yeah. I'm trying to take money off. But up, I got to, up to this point, Every Bank of America I ever gone to, never happened. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I understand. So, so, so y'all explaining y'all perspective, right? Yeah. Y'all the ones with guns and vests. Mm -hmm. What's my perspective? I don't know. You at the, tell at the, at, the, at the bank, she never said it was a bro. Yeah. Like I, like I, 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 I said, hey, is that going to be okay with you? She said, yeah. I put my own car in. Put my own pin in. She asked to see my ID. I gave it to her. Yeah. And she goes in the back. And I'm waiting for the, for, for the, and then the people keep coming out. Hey, they taking care of you. They taking care of you. Yeah. You know, they, 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 you know, it's sure. taking a little while. Next thing I, I hear, yeah. I hear Glocks getting yeah. pulled out. That's what I hear. I hear Glocks getting pulled out from unholstering. Hey, sir, can I talk to you for a minute? So you, you see my perspective. Yeah. Mr. Kugler explains how, from his perspective, it was clear that he did not do anything wrong, and the officers did not personally observe any suspicious behavior on his part before arresting him. Despite this, courts have concluded that a tip from a 911 call alone can justify an investigative stop if it is sufficiently reliable and creates reasonable suspicion that criminal activity may be afoot. In the 2014 case of Navarrete v. California, the Supreme Court held that a 911 caller's report of being run off the roadway created 
reasonable suspicion of drunk driving that allowed officers to conduct a traffic stop. In reaching this conclusion, the court rejected an argument that reasonable suspicion did not exist because, quote, the reported behavior might also be explained by, for example, a driver responding to an unruly child or other distraction, since, quote, reasonable suspicion need not rule out the possibility of innocent conduct. The court also determined that the absence of additional suspicious conduct after the vehicle was first spotted by an officer did not dispel the reasonable suspicion of drunk driving because, quote, an officer who already has such a reasonable suspicion need not surveil a vehicle at length in order to personally observe suspicious driving. However, it should be noted that a tip must do more than provide an accurate description of a suspect's location and appearance. As the Supreme Court explained in the 2000 case of Florida versus JL, a tip must, quote, be reliable in its assertion of illegality, not just in its tendency to identify a determinate person. In the 2019 case of United States versus Maddox, the Northern District of Alabama, which is part of the 11th Circuit, evaluated a case where officers responded to a phone call reporting that, quote, a suspicious male and female had approached the caller's car at an ATM machine at BBVA Compass Bank. The defendant argued that the stop was unjustified because the 911 tip alone was insufficient to create reasonable suspicion, partially because because the caller did not report observing any illegal activity. Although the court decided the case on another issue and did not determine whether the 911 call alone was sufficient to establish reasonable suspicion, it admitted that it was, quote, a close question. Here, although the teller accurately described Mr. Kugler's appearance, she did not report any illegal activity in her 911 call, as none of the behavior she described could be objectively construed as an attempt to rob the bank or commit any other crime. Therefore, it is certainly possible that a court could conclude that the call alone would be insufficient to establish reasonable suspicion if all of the facts were relayed to the responding officers. That every, how many officers you got on there? It's, it's not, man. I mean, yeah, there's five of us out here. So, so it's, can you uh, give him the case number regarding the incident? Yeah, yeah. That way what's the case number? Yeah, no one's been holding anything. From, wow, do we have any more of their property? Yeah, right here. Give, it, give them all their property. Lundy, can you give me the case number? Y'all are withholding though, right now, right? What are we withholding? So I call Atlanta and I say, hey, Officer Fernandez, who's that? Yeah, that y'all, would y'all, be y'all, me. I got first initials on y'all, on y'all names, right? Yeah. Why yeah. well, they not on here? Well, we're gonna, I'm going to give you a case number. So we're it's giving you the case problem. number. Dude, no calm down. It's not a problem. Right? You're telling me to calm down, Officer. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I am. Officer. We're giving you a case number that identifies every single person that was on here. We've got cameras. Excuse me? I don't know how case number is working. Okay. Yeah, like I I got you. I just know you got a very common last name. Fernanda? Yes. Okay. And I'm gonna call the officer. I'm gonna call Metro Atlanta and say Officer Fernandez. And they probably got more than one. I got you. That's all I'm saying. All right. Well, we're gonna give you everything that's associated Thank with this call. Thank Everyone's recording. There's no question about what happened. After the officers provided Mr. Kugler with their names and badge numbers, as well as the case number, their interaction ended without any further incident. When asked about the encounter, Mr. Kugler later told TMZ that, quote, this situation should never have happened. However, Bank of America worked with me and addressed it to my satisfaction and we've moved on. It is unclear whether Mr. Kugler intends to take any legal action against the police department or the officers involved. Overall, Sergeant Fernandez and the Atlanta officers get an A-, minus because although they should have released Mr. Kugler from handcuffs without him asking, they immediately complied with his request, remained respectful and professional throughout the encounter, and provided Mr. Kugler with their names, their badge numbers, and the case number. That being said, this grade is based solely on the officer's behavior after Mr. Kugler was detained, because I cannot evaluate their actions in detaining and handcuffing him without knowing the specific information about the 911 call they received from dispatch. However, during their interaction with Mr. Kugler, the officers did an excellent job of facilitating an open dialogue, addressing Mr. Kugler's concerns, and allowing him time to deal with his anxiety while expressing empathy and consideration for his reaction. And I would encourage other law enforcement officers to learn from these officers' communication style. Mr. Kugler gets an A+, for maintaining a respectful demeanor under incredibly stressful circumstances, clearly explaining the situation to the officers, and advocating for his rights by requesting he be released from handcuffs, and that the officers provide their names and badge numbers.
members. When the officers approached him in the lobby, Mr. Kugler immediately complied with their commands and did not resist or physically escalate the encounter, even though he knew he had not violated the law. Instead, he remained calm and clarified the misunderstanding, and thereby was released from handcuffs after only a few minutes of detention. I commend Mr. Kugler for his patience during the interaction, as well as for following up with Bank of America about the situation upon learning the source of the 911 call. It is unclear why the teller and the manager thought it was appropriate to call 911 in this situation, but I hope that Bank of America takes action as a result of this interaction to better train its employees on how to handle situations like this. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.